This is breaking down the Bible, the Hebrew scriptures. Okay, guys. So what we're talking about on today's information in reference to Hebrew questions and answer is today a lot of you are going out there and you're celebrating something that you don't know anything truly about other than some kind of traditional heritage. So do you even know exactly what you're doing out there? Do you know why you're out there celebrating Independence Day on the 4th of July? Do you? Well, that's what today's all about. A lot of you don't even know that Independence Day, the 4th of July, is not real. It's fake. It's fraud. So most of the times when you have these questions that are coming forth, you need to do a little research to try to find out some of these things on your own. So does Officer Wolfline celebrate Independence Day? No. Did I? Yes. When I was younger, I did celebrate this because it was a traditional thing that they did to celebrate your breaking away from Britain. But did you really break away from Britain? Are you truly free? Those who are the Israelites or Israelite or Hebrew or Hebrew Israelite and thereof, you should know that captivity is real and it's ongoing and the book is real especially if you're looking at the law. So, what is it that's so special about this day? Well, it brings up a lot of history in reference to um, captivity, uh, being a debt slave and fallen soldiers, United States soldiers, and your declaration that wasn't even properly answered. So, were you really free? Well, in this teaching, I'm going to show you if you were really free. Does not the book teach you not to be deceived? You need to look behind the words that are in front of you and how they came about. A country that was built off of blood and sweat and tears of slaves who were never properly paid or properly compensated other than more pain and more oppression. Surely oppression makes a wise man mad. Surely it does because now he knows okay so going from left to right you got your fireworks to commemorate the all the lead and bombs going off then on the right you have the falling flags for the soldiers then going from lower left you have the declaration of the United States and in the middle you have the 4th of July Independence Day which we're going to challenge today and then you have the answer of the Declaration of the American Congress that was sent over for their Independence Day and it wasn't even properly answered but they declared their declaration anyway on this day it's false that's what I see and that's my argument we're gonna go ahead and move forward and see if you cannot come to the same conclusion and see if you are still a debt slave today or and or in captivity if you're one of the chosen people. So over in James Rack Code 116, 16, 18, it says, Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. 17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows, not like this government is very wicked. 18. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits all of all he created. Now, I'm going to move on into the book because then I, I like to start these things with the book because there's a foundation here. And you need to understand why I'm doing this or you need to comprehend that as well. Because a lot of you are not going to teach this precipice of information in today's improper immorality. You're just not. But a lot of you are just not going to teach it this way. 
and I'm associating this for a reason because I want you to wake up Israel I want you to wake up over in uh, Ecclesiastes and uh, Kiohili 749 the heart of the wives is in the house of mourning but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth or mirth mirth is it's like an amusement it's being amused you're in joy or overjoyed you can go look that up as well but the problem is is when you look at number four it specifically tells you that the heart of the wise is in the house of the morning is because the heart of the wise know what's going on and they're not going to be happy all their days okay they're going to have some enjoyment but they're not they're not going to be happy all the single time no because they know what's to come they know what's in front of them they know what's around them let's go to number five it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools this is rightfully so because currently you're going to be out there singing and dancing and carrying on and you're going to be listening to all that music for an enjoyment of a day that's in fraud it's false six for as the crackling of horns under a pot so is the laughter of the fool this also is vanity now if you don't get that rewind this video go look it up and get a grasp on today's current life seven surely oppression maketh a wise man mad and a gift destroyeth the heart listen these words they ring true they pierced the reality of the purest forms because a wise man know what oppression is and today you're oppressed and you joy or enjoy unless you're you're celebrating the most high you don't know what real joy is but you think your oppressors have given you proper freedom and they haven't if you think so try to move across these borders of what you call turtle island or united states without papers because these papers claim you you were sold many, many years ago. A lot of you have something called a birth certificate. Okay? Don't you get certificates for achievements? Or don't you have stock certificates? Look up the word certificate and find out why you have a birth certificate. And some of you were free born, but some of you were born and other you were birth if you're under the illusion eight better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof and the patience and spirit or the ruach is better than the proud and the ruach listen be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry for anger resteth in the bosom of the fools listen you don't have to be totally upset with what's going to, you know, come before you right now while you're listening to this video. Because I, what I'm going to tell you and what I'm going to show you, many others will not. I like to copulate the book with today's uh, reality. And that's one of the things that I'm doing. So you need to get a grasp of what's going to be coming before you. Now, Independence Day of Fraud, that's what we're here, we're here to talk about, and that's what we're going to be moving forward. And a lot of you don't even know what Independence Day is. Some of you just have a day off, or some of you want to celebrate America, and a lot of you don't even know how it formed. You were just so traditionally, inherently indoctrinated, and brief histories you don't even realize what it is 
So, let's get into a little bit. Independence Day, also referred to as the 4th of July, or July 4th, is a federal holiday in the United States commemorating the adoption of the Declaration of Independence of July 4, 1776. Now, the 4th of July is really fraught of July. That's what I think of it as. The real Declaration of Independence, known as the 4th of July, is generally accepted as America's Day of Independence. So, I gotta burst your bubble here because that's just simply not or not true. You see, on July 4th, 1776, the Continental Congress, I mean, this is what you know as the Founding Fathers, approved the Declaration of Independence. Is that correct? Well, let's go a little further. The Declaration of Independence had actually been drafted by Thomas Jefferson a month prior and was submitted for approval on July 2nd. This brought about a fight in Congress. Well, obviously, there's nothing new. They were fighting back then and they fight now. There's some similarities. So, if you miss what I just said, rewind the video. Because July 4th was just the day picked. It did not actually evolve into the proper day that you call holiday. So if you miss that, go back and listen to this video again and read what's on the screen. Now moving forward in the continuance of the Independence Day fraud, July 2nd can be argued that it is the real Independence Day because as you know, or you may or may not know, it's known as the day of the Continental Congress that was declared independent from Britain by John Adams. Even thought July, well, he did think that July 2nd was going to be the day of the holiday, um, as I was alluding to in the previous slide. But some of you don't even know that after declaring independence, you are not independent at all. The Declaration of Independence wasn't even published until like the late mid or middle or August or late August because of 1776 and then Great Britain never formally responded. So when you look at the history and the documentation versus where you're online or where you're in the history books, some of your history books are not even going to tell you this information unless you really research it. So yes, this is true. Uh, in August or late August or mid-August 1776, um, Britain, they just never responded back to United States America. So, and a lot of you don't even know that Britain did respond in writing in the essence of mocking the Declaration of Independence with respect to the part about all men created equally. You know that's kind of crazy during the time of 1776 because all while the Americans had still indulged in the act of slavery with oppression with with oppressed men and women as slaves they still carried on this illusion of independence now even though that the United States declared their independence while in the revolutionary war and it was underway, I want you to think about what I'm about to tell you. Is it logical to start a war for independence after declaring independence? So basically what I'm telling you is during the war, they declared independence. Go back and rewind this. You'll get it. Now, the Revolutionary War went on to around about 1783. And that's seven years after your so-called Independence Day. You know, like today, July 4th of 2018. That's why I'm doing the video. Because I want to do it on this day and publish it on this day. So you guys can get it. It's all false. It's fraud. Now, you want to sit up here and, and bake your cookies and hit your grills and all that good stuff. That's totally up to you. 
but I am going to present forth this truth to you this day on a what you call or so-called July 4th. Now, let's go back to your so-called Independence Day. When you make a declaration, you stick to it because that's what you do as an American, right? You've already made it, so you got to stick to it and carry out the lie. Now, the war, it ended on September 3rd, 1783, with the signing of the treaty in, from the French or in Paris. So now, are you going to celebrate the 4th of July as your Independence Day? Well, I say unto you, do not learn the ways of the heathen, and that's in the book. So basically, if you didn't get all that that I just showed you in a short amount of time, you got to go back and do a little research, okay? The proper declaration was July 2nd, not July 4th, and then it wasn't even properly printed until August to sum up everything that I just showed you. So let's move on from your history banks of Independence Day to your common day events that you do on this day like barbecuing and the etymology of barbecuing they used to use pits on the ground this is what they used to do back in the day and that's what you see in front of you and more than likely what's in front of you is not going to be beef it's going to be hog it's going to be pig it's going to be swine because that's your pop, popular barbecue meat during these times. But if you're of the book and on the Leviticus laws, you know that you're not to eat swine. Now, going into the, the background of barbecuing as it came to America, we know that's primarily known in the South and um, pits and then a lot of it came from, you know, certain parts of Africa, West Indies, as you might call West Indies and or Jamaica. Upon it was enslaved by the men and their descendants, uh, not to the so-called ones of today's barbecue pit masters that innovated and refined regional barbecue traditions over all the southern, eastern, western, and northern parts here in and abroad the world. When I mean here in, I mean the United States and abroad. And other, these other traditions were added to a base created by the so-called black hands and forged in crucible of slavery. Bottom line is, the proper barbecuing techniques and the knowledge of barbecuing was, was and held at bay by the slaves. They're the ones that did it, and then it was later stolen like everything else was stolen here in the United States for others survival other than the slaves to make this long story short now if you go back into the actual etymology of barbecue or BBQ or barbecue I found some interesting points for you to go look up and learn in addition you know uh, Native Americans and Europeans the very word etymology of this particular word barbecue is said to derive from both the Carib through Spanish of this name called barbacoa to roast over hot coals on a wooden framework or from Western European sources barbecue in French from head to tail. Now speaking on the, on the etymology of the actual process it's a coincidence that barbecue shares some of the same syllables as barbarian. And you take a look at it and then you can break them apart. Yeah. Okay, so, and that derived from the Greek word denoting those who don't speak Greek. So you look at it, you can look at the same letter shaped patterns of the actual word itself. Now, during slavery, the barbecue pits were sometimes used by slave masters to torture the slaves by roasting them on their backs whenever they were thought to be out of line or line in manners. So if they thought they were having the improper attitude or whatever that day was, they used the barbecue to barbecue slaves and they really barbecued the slaves. And that's where you get that subjection of dark meat and it's the outer land 
So you can imagine your slaves that are on your barbecue pit, that dark charred meat of somebody's back gleaming and steam up from these pits, yelling and screaming. So yeah, barbecue involved torture of slaves. Now, some of the proximity of the history says that uh, barbecue came to the Americas and the Carolinas spreading to Texas through Mexico, the European colonizers, obviously, and the antelopers basically stole the technique of smoking meat from the Amerindians and the Caribbeans called the Taino. They used it not only to cook, but to preserve the meat to be eaten at a later time. Smoking, you know, when you dry the meat like you have in jerky, beef jerky, turkey jerky. It preserves the meat if you smoke it and it will preserve it for a very long time because they traveled long distances back then not like they do now but some by foot by horse and carriage now <clears throat> moving out it out of the whole barbecue thing and into some more rel relative matters about your whole Independence Day and giving you some history about it. I'm moving into your your times of disparity where you should know that a lot of the information that you're receiving from your government is just totally false. You have some winners here and there, but not very many. I want to present the bankruptcy of the United States to you in the background of 1933 so you can understand why you're currently holding what you call money as you're out there spending all these definite note these debt notes that are really called frns federal reserve notes and they're not it's not real money a lot of you think that when you you pull pull out these green dollar backs with all these different men on them that it's real money it's not look at it it'll tell you it's a, a proper tender of payment for debt it's a debt reserve note is what it is. It's not real money. Gold and silver is your real money. And a lot of times, nobody's going to really tell you that. So we're going to get into this for a little bit. And 1933 was a year of the major events in America. During this year, constitutional money, gold, namely, I want to make sure you see that, became outlawed. Right? Why did it become outlawed? Well, so they can probably control you, of course. And effectively, all property in America became mortgaged and held in trust, like you have a trust when you go into these banks called courts, for the Federal Reserve Bank as collateral for the nation's debt. Now, remember, I told you earlier uh, about the Revolutionary War and your current Independence Day. Keep that in mind as we go through this, because this has a lot to do with it as well. All of this was done without the full knowledge and consent of the American people. Your chattel, your people, your sheeple. A lot of you don't know that they're always trying to contract with you. And that this is a big problem today when you go into these uh, so-called courts. They're really boardrooms and bankruptcy court. This was the year that the government instituted the creation of the all capital letter straw man names via the newly required birth certificates for American citizens, thus creating a whole new class of persons as debtor slaves. Okay, cleaning it up a little bit. <clears throat> a straw man is your legal fiction. That's who you operate here in the United States under a admiralty law. It's a law at sea. It's like having the military at sea, but you're coming ashore. You're still operating as that because now you have a captain or a person that's in charge of the ship known as what you call today as a judge. There hasn't been a judge in these courts since 1789. So they're executive administrators who come out as a trustee and then turn you into the trustee because your proper status as man, woman, executive administrator and beneficiary is taken from you in trickery and they punish you for it. This is why you always have to pay something because the United States is in debt. These 
courts or bankruptcy courts to make you pay a debt back over to England or Rome, however you want to put it today. Persons, child, children, kid, they're all false. They're all fake. You don't have any. You have sons and daughters. That's what you have. This, this wicked, devious plan is long before you. Long before you. Okay, so they have you under a very strong delusion. Okay, this is what you need to get across and look up. The first thing you do when you get in trouble, what do they put in your head? Well, I got to go seek an attorney. I got to go seek a lawyer. There's a difference between a lawyer and an attorney. A turn means to turn over property to their system. There's a common system, then there's a legal system. There's a common law system, and then there's the legal society. Two different things. But they blend them as one. When you're married, the proper marriage in biblical times prior to this setup was that when you went into your wife, you took her as a wife, and you went into her, meaning you had sex with her. That was your wife from the law, the Torah, the book. Now that you know there's a different version today in today's modern tongue called Bible. You don't need permission to get married. You just simply need a marriage agreement or contract. Because men lose all their entitlements and rights and equity to their seed. You're giving up equity once you get these marriage licensing. Think about it. It's a marriage licensing. Your daddy, your deity, your domestic authority is now the state and the county you live in because that's where you get those pieces of paper because that's what they are. Your most powerful, important thing that you have on you as a man or woman is your signature this is why they want to throw you in jail because they need your signature because you're the one that powers the united states without that signature they can do nothing they lie they throw on adhesions to your contracts and you don't even know it a proper contract is fully disclosed and all knowing with all parties they don't tell you that but that's what that is a marriage license is a contract with adhesions that they slap on to the back of that contract and you don't even know it moving on on june 5th 1933 united states congress passed house joint resolution 192 which serves as a declaration of bankruptcy congress declared in house joint resolution 192 that demanding payments in gold constitutional money or any particular form would now be against public policy at the same time President Roosevelt issued Executive Order 6102 forbidding the hoarding of gold coins, gold bullion, and certificates. With this executive order, Roosevelt ordered the most of the gold into circulation to be turned in to the Federal Reserve Banks across the nation under the threat of fines and 10 years imprisonment. So I, I chuckle and laugh because... They're telling you to turn in your property to them under executive order because you're a United States citizen. Well, wrong. A lot of you are not United States citizens. You can be an American. You can be people. But it's kind of hard to be a dead piece of paper. They're not the same. They're not one in the same. But uh, a lot of you walk around calling yourselves citizens look up that word and see how you can become citizens the man or woman can take on any role that he wishes if that's the role you wish to take on go ahead how's that worked out for some of you so far in jail prisons fines tickets irs taxes a lot of you don't even know taxes are unlawful but you do it anyway Unless you know what you're doing and playing the game, a lot of you are going to be jammed up in these situations. Moving on. 
What the leaders at the time failed to disclose was that the confiscation of all gold money and property that made all Americans spell into smelling proper case creditors to the U.S. bankruptcy. This is what I'm alluding to. You're not debtors, you're creditors. When you pay your bill, you're double paying it. But they don't want to tell you this. They don't want to show you this because that'll run them back into their lower stance. Your public servants, what do you call your public officials, your presidents, your assistant presidents, your vice presidents, your police officers or policy officers, sheriffs, sheriff's deputies, all of those are servants. They're public servants. You are the people. They're supposed to serve you. They're not supposed to take dominance over you, but because you don't know and you've been properly indoctrinated by them, you don't know that you have the power or authority to shut them down. And that's why they're having a big problem right now because a lot of us who are waking up or awoken is pushing this information so you'll know what it is. How do you go to court for a traffic fine and it turns criminal? Everything that's criminal, tickets, all this is all commercial, civil. There is no criminal. It's all commercialized. It's all civil. Go look that up. So again, what the leaders at the time failed to disclose was that with the confiscation of all gold money and property that made all Americans, this is spelled in proper case because this is the way you spell creditors, uppercase and lowercase. If you look at your, your driver license, your birth certificates, you will notice they're spelled in all capital letters. You don't write that way. So look at your driver's license, look at your credit cards, and look at these different pieces of paper that they give you and your creditors give you. It's all spelled in uppercase letters. Moving on to the U.S. bankruptcy because the passage of House Joint Resolution 192 is now illegal for Americans to pay for anything. Look up this, this law. Look it up. It's not really law. It's called policy. You got to realize that everything is corporate now. Okay. That's why you have a president, vice president. It's nothing more than going down the street and looking at McDonald's or Walmart. They have a president, vice president. That's what the United States Corporation is. Look it up. It has a Duns and Bradstreet number. Moving on. Gold was traded for, for Federal Reserve notes of the indebtedness, which made paying for anything impossible as notes of debt do not pay for anything but delay the payment until a later date. Again, when I was telling you earlier, you got to go back and look at the what you call dollar, the dollar amount. Look on that dollar. Pull it out. Just pull out one of your dollars and just look at it. A regular dollar or $20 bill, five, six, whatever you want to call it. It will tell you it's a Federal Reserve note at the top of that thing. And they'll say the United States of America. But what a lot of you don't pay attention to, right below the words the and united, these are words that says this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. Now, why would you have private debts and public debts? Because it's legal tender. It's a debt note. And a lot of you don't even pull it out and look at it because you think it's proper money. It's not. It's telling you it's a Federal Reserve note. And then I just told you what the Federal Reserve Bank across the nations are doing or did during this time frame under Roosevelt. And a lot of you won't even pay attention to it. All these toilet paper hundred dollar bills are worth nothing more without your signature on something somewhere somebody has to go into what you call a bank or trading institution where you have an account with your 
with their social security number that you're calling yours and they use that to go to the Federal Reserve Bank and to get parts of your credit you have unlimited credit that they will not let you know that you have in proper stance and will not give you all access to it because a lot of you would go crazy just being honest so a lot of times when you look at certain aspects of things um, they're not going to tell you what they want you to know they're not going to tell you what they what you should know they're going to make up something that they would rather have to control you okay listen carefully to my words I'm moving on now listen prior to 1913 most Americans own clear elodial title okay that's free and clear to their property and you know anything of liens and mortgages until the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 they hypothecated all the property within the, the federal United States to the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve in which the trustee stockholders held legal title the US citizen tenant franchisee that's exactly what this means when you say you're you're a citizen and a lot of your houses you don't even own you're just tenants in them oh I own a house no you don't because they, they're mortgage it you, if you don't hold it if you don't have a deed to it you just double paid because really you're supposed to have access to all this but they won't let you do it you're double paying your debts you're paying them and then you're paying uh, Britain back so the US citizen tenant franchisee was registered as a beneficiary remember earlier I told you that's what you were of the trust via his or her birth certificate again I'm putting this here to let you know that that birth certificate is key factor to a lot of things especially in your likeness and you need to get what I'm trying to tell you look this stuff up you've been lied to again in 1933 the federal uh, the federal United States hypothecated, hypothecated all of the present and future properties assets and labor of their subjects the 14th Amendment United States citizen now remember I asked you are you still free are you free born because the 14th Amendment made every single body who calls themselves a United States citizen and some Americans I would say some because some know how to maneuver the system a debt slave to the Federal Reserve System. In return, the Federal Reserve System agreed to extend the Federal United States Corporation all the credit. This is a money substitute. This is why when you go into banks, they don't have a lot of money. They just want to put it to your bank account because it's all credit. So you have all the credit you needed. So the United States Corporation on their debt slaves or their citizens, this is how they get the credit and it's your credit but you're barred against through your labor. I'm going to say that again. You are the creditor. The United States barred against you on their birth certificate and they bar against you because you are their citizens in likeness of your name. There's a difference between a man and woman and a citizen. You are not a United States citizen. But they barred in likeness of your name. When you were born, not birthed, okay ships and ships birth okay when you were born as a man or woman you had a brother that was born with you one was on paper and then there's you the natural you they took that and they sold that and then they do projections of how many babies that are going to be born and they use that as another bartering technique for labor to get things done because when you service, you have to pay compensation and or labor cost. So a lot of you probably won't understand this and a lot of you will. Now, going back to federal United States Corporation, all the credit and money substitute it needed. Like any other debtor, the Federal Reserve, do you hear me? I'm telling you who the debtor is in today's society. Like any other debtor, the federal United States government 
had to assign collateral and security to their creditors as a condition of the loan. Do you know who the creditors are of the United States government? Since the federal United States didn't have any assets, they assigned the private property. You hear me? They assigned the private property of their economic slaves, the U.S. citizens, as collateral against the unpayable federal debt. Do you get me now? So, are you still celebrating Independence Day? Are you? Let's move on. Wise man oppressed, starting to get a little riled up here because some of you need to know this. They also pledged the unincorporated federal territories, national parks, forests, and birth certificates and nonprofit organizations as collateral against the federal debt. You that are in nonprofit organizations in your likeness and your names, and the big one above all is churches. Nonprofit organizations thinking you're getting those 501c3s for free. You think you're safe? You're not safe. Especially if you're a private ministry. If you are a private ministry with a 501c3, you're not safe. Private means private. Do not get this confused. A private ministry does not have a 501c3. Some of you out there call yourself ministries and have 501c3 and that you're private. You must be shaking hands behind those cloths. I'm going to read this again. The United States of Federal Corporation pledged the unincorporated federal territories, national parks, forest birth certificates, birth certificates, and nonprofit organization as collateral against the federal debt you've been sold here. All has already been transferred as payment to the international bankers. Unwittingly, America has returned to its pre-American revolution, feudal roots whereby all land is held by a, a sovereign and the common people had no rights to hold a loyal title to property. How many of you knew that? Why do you think I say certain things on some of these videos? I don't have a lot of time to do a lot of videos, but when I do, you know they're power punches. And a lot of you don't take time out and go back and review this. Whether it's the Hebrew scriptures or this stuff right here in common, in common out, in common law, and illegal stuff that's before you. <clears throat> I don't give legal advice. I have to live by the law. That's in the Hebrew scriptures. Now, once again, we the people are the tenants and sharecroppers renting our own property from a sovereign in the guise of the Federal Reserve Bank. We the people, again, have exchanged one master for another. And you know as Hebrew or Israelites, You can't serve two masters, but yet you blindly serve one every day. Going back, I'm going to say this to you again. We, the people, have exchanged one master for another. This has been going on for over 80 years. It's more now without the informed knowledge of the American people, without a voice protesting loud enough. Again, without a voice protesting loud loud enough now it's easy to grasp why america is fundamentally in bankrupt listen guys 
you got to realize you got to realize that the common law is a foundation it's a fine team source of, of substance and remuter rights if not it's, it might be your very liberty against this wicked system I'm telling you look it up understand my words as I move forth through this information because a lot of you are okay with being oppressed and some of you are waking up finding out these courts are not just of course they're not just they're corporations they're Kmart they're Walmart they're your local food markets it's a company an executive can do whatever they want to you they're the president of the United States think about it everybody else has ministry or king chancellors America is a corporation guys wake up that's why they can do whatever they want to you because you're operating in their company you got the local security at Walmart or Kmart or any of these places that go around and do whatever they want there's no difference between the security at Walmart and the police officers they're all policy officers they go by policy this is why they always have to upsell you on the side of the road and when I mean they, I mean the local police, I mean the sheriffs, FBI, all of them. Because they have to get you to sign to upgrade the charges in order to charge you more money for fines and codes. They didn't say law. They like to lie and tell you that you broke the law. But ask them what law did you break? Then they're going to say 101.CBD142 code. Well, law is not code. It's not policy. You can catch them on that. Listen, when you're on the side of these roads, do not argue with the police. Do not argue with those sheriffs. Do not argue with these state troopers. Just simply say, how can I take your order? Become the freaking drive through The reason why you want to say that is because they're trying to provide a service and contract with you. And what you want to do is under duress, you want to say, how can I take your order? Because you're going to give them a bill. You're going to give them a bill. I just showed you you're the creditor. Why is a debtor coming to you to make you pay their way of life? You're going to give them a bill. How can I take your order? Become the drive through Be happy they pulled you over. Because now you can give them a bill for five, ten thousand dollars and let them know that I'm willfully taking your order and you're going to sign VC or NA and then your name on that ticket. That means under duress. Both of those. If you don't remember anything else, sign VC, then your name or NA, then your name. And if he says, give me your license, registration and insurance and you say that's an order. And he says, what do you mean? If that's an order, I'm going to do it. Just tell me that's an order. And if he tells you that's if he's dumb enough to tell you that that's an order, then go right ahead. Tell him you're glad, you're glad to carry out his orders. Just let him know you're glad to carry out your orders. And you're going to be charging him. You're going to send him a bill. And if he says how much, tell him. If he doesn't, that's on him. Because now you know you're the creditors. Okay. Now, uh, I think I'm done with that rant. Let's move on for a little bit. Going to the second portion of this bankruptcy of the United States. And while you have creditor versus debtors, and they're the debtors, now you know who the debtors are. And that why, now you know why the police are always trying to give you tickets for speeding and all these other different things. They're trying to upsell you because criminal charges pay more money. And this is what they have to do to get more credit, to pay more money so they can have their retirement on you. This is why they're always likely to throw you in jail because they can upsell you and then get their so-called judges or executive administrators who are really trustees to switch sides with you, trying to turn you into the trustee versus the beneficiary when you go to these courts. You need to let them know that you're not appearing as a defendant. Okay? 
what are you doing there defending? There's no reason you should be in their courts in the first place. You can send that document in for speeding tickets in 72 hours. Tell them you're sending your signature and hand them a bill and see what they and see what they react like. And tell them if you want to show up, you're only going to show up as the man or the beneficiary. Those are their options. And your your appearance requires a hundred thousand dollars. So if you show up, you're showing up for payment. And you let them know that you're you're only in there as a man or beneficiary trying to get paid because you were threatened to be here. So now that you're here, where's your money? Okay, so at the top of the, the slide, the first bullet point, the members and association of the bar thereafter formed committees, granted themselves special privileges. Obviously they think they're above, they're above you. Immunities and franchises. This is how it's hard to sue uh, what you call police officers and judges is because you're suing them as police officers and judges. You need to go after them in claims as men and women then you'll start seeing a lot more successes. Held meetings concerning the judicial procedures. Judicial procedures, right? And further amended laws. They're not really laws. They're policy statutes and procedures. To conform to trend of their judicial decisions, this is meant to give them barriers so you can't sue them and take them down in their way of practicing, their way of what they're calling their law. Okay? You're, you're in their own... You know frat house that's basically what it boils down to judicial decision or, or to accomplish similar objectives which means they they murky the water between policy and law including these hodgepodging the jurisdictions of law and equity together which is known as today as one of the form of action this was this was not by accident but by a carefully conceived plan do they not confederate against you? Does not the book tell you that they confederate against you? The enumerated, specified, and distinct jurisdiction established by the ordained Constitution of 1787, Article 3, Section 2, and under the Bill of Rights, 1791 Amendment 7, where further hodgepodge and fundamental changes in 1982 to Article, excuse me, to 3 include admiralty jurisdiction which it was once again brought inland. That's how you do it. Admiralty jurisdiction, like I said, they're on the water and they bring the military law inland on land and that's what you're in when you're in these uh, courts or banks. You're in the captain's ship and he's the one that's sentencing you to the brig. That's why you go to jail where you sit there and go back and forth and you're asking for forgiveness because you're on their ship. You're not in on land when you enter it. That's why you have what they call the bar that thing swings left and right those little doors they swing left and right as though if you're entering the ship the gates the gates to the ship and that's why he's high up there because he's here to uh, go against you it's just like when you hire these attorneys and lawyers they're shipping clerks they they're they're attorneys they're turning your property and everything that you're over to them for payment to them listen the court systems are modern day pirates. That's all they are. They're modern day pirates. Nothing more. All your, what you call law enforcement, all that, it's not law. No, it's policy. They steal from you so they can get rich. Now listen, this is the fundamental change necessary to affect unification of civil and admiralty procedure. That's why they muddy the water so you can't tell the difference unless you have some time in there learning these acts and policies in the proper law. Just as the 1938 rules abolished the distinction between the actions at law and suits in equity, this change would abolish the distinction between civil actions and in suits in admiralty. Now you can see the Civil Rules of Procedure 1982, uh, edition page 17, also see uh, Federalist Papers number 83 Declaration of Revolves of the First Continental Congress that's in 1774 uh, on the day of October 14th. The Declaration of the Cause and Necessity of Taking Up Arms July 6, 1775 Declaration of Independence that's today July 4th, 1776 but ours today is July 4th 2018 the one that I'm speaking to you of. 
and then you can go look at Bennett versus uh, Butterworth, uh, 52 U.S. 669. All right. Moving on, the United States thereafter entered the Second World War, during which time the League of Nations was reinstituted under pretense of the United Nations, 22 USCA 287. Okay, you can look in that section in sequence. And the Bank for International Settlements was reinstituted under the pretense of the Brenton Woods Agreement, 22 USCA 286. You can see that sequence as the International Monetary Fund. The fund and the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. The bank or the World Bank. You do have World Banks out there. Go look them up. The United States, as a corporate body, political, artificial, came out of World War II in worse economic condition than when it entered and in 1950 declared bankruptcy and reorganization. The reorganization is located in Title V of the United States Code's antidote. So listen, if you don't get what this is, this is reorganization to hide the stuff that they did from the faults of all the wars they've been into. America is built off bloodshed and war. Now listen, moving forward. Now, the codes that are annotated from in Title V of the United States Code's the explanation at the beginning of 5 USCA is most, most informative reading. Hint, hint. Now, listen. The Secretary of Treasury was appointed as the receiver in bankruptcy. Enough said, guys. You got to look this up. I'm telling you now, you got to look this up. Now, with that being said, because I wanted to try to keep this short, and as far as I can get to it, you go out there and determine whether if you want to use your day of what you might call independence or the 4th of July to do your grilling and cooking out there in the open range or at your homes with your barbecue grills all fired up and blast off firecrackers to commemorate war that you're still paying for because you're free, right? You're free. And a lot of you are under the disguise of what the red, white, and blue really is. So a lot of you look at different aspects of racism and don't even know what racism really is if you look at the word. Okay? You have different levels of racism even if you know what that word really is. Because the book was about nations. I mean, the Hebrew scriptures was about nations. It wasn't about, you know, the, the decorating of your skin of color. Your hue, melanated people, which is what the book is about. It's only about Israel, about Israelites. But a lot of you celebrate in different functions and don't know who and what you really are. And a lot of people stand behind you like this guy and just laugh because they didn't sucker another one into thinking what this is. Independence Day. When did the slaves be free? When were you free? Are you free? These are some valid questions. A lot of you need to wake up. Especially when you're talking about southern style for Independence Day and then across the nations. I show this slide to show ignorance. To me, it's about your nation, your background, who you are and your actions, not about the color of your skin. But sometimes there's a lot of buffoonery and high level ignorance and sometimes it has to be shown. A lot of you don't even know or realize that you're still in bondage. Mr. Aim. Whether it be your political, your legal, your lawful, conscious ignorance, you're still bonded unless you know how to work this system. 
so you need to learn to break these mental chains and indoctrination and understand stand under what is proper law and not these admiralty flags and and legal stuff and legal society start learning the law the common law these attorneys belong to the bar association the British accredited registry they don't belong to you they're out for profit you're the last one on the totem pole because if they belong to the Britain or the UK or England they're Europeans then you have them first then the American Bar Association United States then you have the state they're in then you have the charter they're in then the county then their local court system look how many levels they are and then you after all of that you're the last one on the totem pole once you hire an attorney because, so, because an attorney can't be in law they can only be at law my question to you is Independence Day a lie being independent is a lie this is check you for learning when is the real independent day when did the slaves gain independent freedom or were free I put where here free because where is freedom I'm being facetious in the slide it's not a mistake when did you gain freedom can you tell me and again do you know who you are now do you know the difference between these two just like the questions all right leave your answers in the comment section below what is the difference between the two you can find this and other information on officerwithline.com make sure you like us on Facebook don't forget to subscribe you know and hit that bell also on YouTube all right make sure you can leave comments on the Facebook channel and don't forget us on Twitter and again thank you and wake up